Today I want to talk about a really important subject, insanity, <laughs> and how to stop it. Yes, being able to buy a 65-inch TV for under $400, that's insane, but that's not what I'm talking about. Having too many signs in your house that have words on it, that's not what I'm talking about. Diane, if you're watching, I'm not mocking these signs. They're all really good signs. However, it could be a little excessive. The insanity that I want to talk about today is the insanity in the real estate market. I'm going to give you an example of just one house. It's right next door on the other side of those trees. That's the house I'm talking about. I'm not in love with the color or the solar panels on top of the roof, but I'm not gonna go there. However, the grass is greener on the other side sometimes. Check that out, right? That's my yard, that's their yard. That's the house on the other side of the fence. This is not a video about whose grass is greener. You know who would win that one. Instead, it's about stopping the insanity in the real estate market. When I say, stop the insanity, someone could say, sounds a little dramatic, Harry. What exactly are you talking about? I had to show you guys this first. I pulled this out of the closet yesterday. The Army Achievement Medal from 1994. Yes, it's for me. You know what I got it for? For renovating the barracks in Hawaii. I was in the 25th Infantry, and I renovated the barracks, and I got an Army Achievement Medal. Yeah, I'm definitely... Pat myself on the back for that. <laughs> However, I'm making a point. I was renovating stuff before I was really even renovating stuff. I renovated the barracks. I broke my shoulder and they wanted to get me out of the, uh, the army. I didn't want to stay in forever anyway. Don't get me wrong. However, I said, you know what? I'm pretty good at renovating stuff. How about you keep me in for a while? <laughs> and they did. This is the house next door. You could tell by the nasty solar panels and the color. Yes, that is my business card. I taped it to the screen. <laughs> Not really that high tech. All right, but I'm, I'm making a point here. Back on 8-12-2021, they bought the house for 300000 And I know, because I actually put an offer in and got it accepted at 300000 However, our Kingsburg property got approved, or actually they took our offer the day before, and I backed out of this one. I'm sorry that I did, but I did. They bought it for 300000 They renovated it. I'm not going to go into detail about the not that good of renovations. But they put the house on the market for six twenty nine over a year ago. Here's the insanity. $629,000, as soon as I saw that, I said to Diane, what I would have done, what they should have done. I'm always hesitant to say should, you know, like, who likes to be should on? <laughs> I would have put the house on the market for four ninety nine. How much did they put into renovations? I don't know. Even if they put a hundred thousand dollars in, we were we were in the height of the market. Four ninety nine. You would have got multiple offers. The interest rates were still like free money. You would have got multiple offers, and you would have sold it for five seventy five. Let's say instead they put it on. Got a little greedy. Six twenty nine. It's been sitting for over a year now. As I scroll through the price history, I'm not sure if I can play music in the background or YouTube might flag it and not let me put it on. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna hum for you guys as I scroll through the price history. When you're buying or selling real estate, sometimes it's really important to look in the mirror and say, does that price make sense? And that price did not make sense. You had to like the mirror, right? Back to the insanity. How does someone come up with such an insane list price? In my opinion, I say insane. Yeah, it sounds dramatic. However, I think it was $130,000 above where they should have started. 
if I was the realtor on that, or I was selling it my my own piece of property, I would have put it on the market for four hundred ninety nine thousand. And I'm pretty experienced in this. It would have sold for five hundred seventy five thousand within two months. I mean, we would have had an offer on it the first open house weekend, and we would have sold it within just two months. Instead, here it is over a year later, and it's still sitting. Yes, it says pending offer, but what happens when the house sits on the market this long? Yes, it becomes stale. People are asking, what's wrong with this piece of property? It hasn't sold. Buyers start getting pickier and pickier, and they can actually start bullying you. <laughs> and they could come in, and they could start making you drop the price even more. So it says it's pending at five fifty nine, but I would not be surprised if we see the sales price even lower than that. How does someone come up with that insane starting price? Two ways. Option number one is the seller was so adamant about a high starting price that the realtor said, all right, let's listen at that. The realtor knew that it was outrageous, but really wanted to get the listing. I said, okay, I'll do it. So there's option number one. Option number two <laughs> still doesn't paint the realtor in that good of a picture because option number two is there was someone like, let's say, I don't know, Harry <laughs> came in and said, Here's my thoughts on it. We are in a super hot market right now. Things around five hundred, six hundred thousand dollars. They're going in days with multiple offers. One open house, and we get multiple offers, and we could sell it probably for about five seventy-five. And ultimately, you say yes or no to the offers. So let's list it for four ninety-nine. Let's get the ball rolling. This is going to be exciting, right? Sellers all pumped up. Yeah, this guy Harry. Yeah, sounds good. And then this guy Joe comes in. I'm just using Joe. If there's any Joes out there, this is not a reflection on Joes. I really like Joes. I have quite a few Joes in my life that I like. So I'm just saying, Joe. Joe comes in and says, hey, you know what? In this hot market, don't take less than 630. I don't even know what kind of accent I'm doing right now, so no offense. The seller. I mean, anybody in their right mind's like, Harry's a really nice guy. I kind of like him. <laughs> However, $130,000 above where Harry's going to start. I'm going with Joe. And again, no offense, Joe. I'm going with Joe. Joe knows. <laughs> which kind of pisses me off. Joe knows he's not getting 630. But what he's going to do is he's going to come back to the seller in a few weeks and say, hey, listen, we haven't had as much activity as we would have liked. The market's changed. Let's drop the price a little bit. Well, at this point, the house is already a little stale because the market is still super hot. And buyers are saying... Why didn't this house sell? Everything else is selling. Why didn't this house sell? There must be something wrong with it. So along with the reduction in, in price and the cost out of pocket, like monetarily, the amount of money the seller's coming up with, because, oh, I don't know if you know this, but the taxes are over $10,000 on that house. So the seller spent $20,000 on just taxes. Besides the monetary loss, carrying costs and everything else there's some kind of like intangible loss and i say intangible like that because if you're a seller have you ever sold a house it can get stressful it can get a little anxious if you have a house on the market for months and it's not selling you're getting some grays you might be even losing your hair some people might even feel feel like they're a failure what did i do i didn't do the renovations right now i'm not even gonna say anything about the renovations over there Start questioning yourself. I don't think I should be in this business. I did this wrong. Da, da, da. Here's my point. My point is, this is not uncommon. This is not like a rare instance. I see this all the time. And you know what I do is I complain to Diane about it behind the scenes. Can you believe this house is on the market for this amount? And then six months later, it's still on the market. So instead of just talking about it behind the scenes and complaining and stuff like that, I said to myself, so I said, self, do you want to be part of the problem and complain? And not say anything, or you want to be part of the solution? What did you? Yeah, I want to be part of the solution. I'm gonna throw my hat in the arena and start selling houses. If you're part of the insanity, it's okay. We can make it right. Just give me a call or email me and say, "Hey, Harry, I want to stop the insanity." <laughs>